Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph piecewise functions. And I think piecewise functions usually kind of confuse a lot of students because, you know, the way they look. It looks just kind of confusing. There's, you know, all these expressions going on over here. You have these inequalities, and it's not usually part of functions. It's like, what exactly does everything mean? So basically, you know, to define a piecewise function, it's just a function comprised of two or more functions. So we don't really need to be, you know, so taken aback when we see a function, f of x, right, that's the name of the function, and you can see that it's comprised here of two different functions. So my first function is 1 half of x, and my other function is 3. Where here, I have two functions, and then here I have three functions. So you could even do piecewise functions that are, you know, made up of 4, or 5, 6, but we're going to kind of keep to keep this kind of simple video and just deal with a couple um, functions. Now, when graphing functions, uh, basically all we're simply doing is graphing each of those functions correctly and then abiding by the constraint. So what the function, what this piecewise function means is this f of x function, the value of the f of x function is 1 half x for only input values. Because remember, like, here's our function f of x, that's our input. So the so we're only going to use this function for input values or x values that are less than or equal to 0. And we're going to use the bottom function for only values that are greater than, um, greater than 0. So to graph, the easy, there's two different ways I like to do it. The first way is just to graph each, each function that you have separately. And this is just kind of like an introductory way. It takes usually a little bit longer to do, but I think it's like a really important way just to understand what exactly are we graphing. And you've got to obviously know how to graph um, you know, functions to, to be able to graph the piecewise function. So the first function is 1 half x. And forget about the constraint. I think the constraints usually confuse a lot of people. So let's just forget about the constraint and say, all right, what is 1 half x? Well, remember, that's basically a line. So you could say 1 half x, I'll put this, you know, plus 0, y equals mx plus b, right? So we have a y-intercept at 0. And then we're going rise 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Or you could go down 1 to the left 2, right? And let's just do a couple points just to kind of get a line. And that's perfect. That's all we need. For the next one is we have a function at 3. And a, when you have just a value at 3, um, basically that's going to be your y value. Your output value is at 3. 1, 2, 3. And you're just going to have a nice little horizontal line, OK? So that's what these two functions look like separately. Now, all we're simply going to do is bring them together. However, before we bring them together, what's important is for us to be able to kind of look at these and say, all right, I'm graphing the 1 half x, but I'm only graphing when x is less than 0. So you know, if you think about a number line, like here's positive 2, here's negative 2, right? Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. So when x's are less than 0, that's going to be from the y-axis over. So in reality, all we need to do is we're not, going to erase, we're not going to draw anything that's positive for where the x values are positive, only when the x values are negative. And that's greater than or equal to, so that is going to be um, filled in. Here, we're only graphing 3, the function 3, for x values that are greater than 0. Well, again, you know, here's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. We're only graphing for values that are greater than 0. So that's going to be for all the positive values. But it's not greater than or equal to, so 0 is not included. So we're going to use an open circle. And then we're going to go ahead and delete them. Now, basically what we do, now that we've, separate, now that we've graphed them separately and added in their constraint, we just combine them into one graph. Okay, So I'd say, all right, down here, down 1, over 2, graph, and then 1, 2, 3, open circle. Boom. And there you go. All right, so the next one uh, is now we have a quadratic here. And we have another linear equation, y equals mx plus b. Uh, so, um, or, you know, mx plus b, I guess you could think about that. So, again, as far as, you know, quadratics, uh, you know, it's really helpful just to kind of know what the parent function is. The other way we can do this is just by graphing them together on the same. You could use different marker colors, but I really don't see a problem with just using kind of the same. Uh, so let's go and do 2x squared. Now, we know that x squared is going, you know, starts at 0, 0, and then goes over 1, up 1, and then over 2, you know, up 4. So if you're multiplying that by 2, that's basically stretching that as a power of 2. So it's going to go over 1, up 2, 
and to the left one, up two. And again, the really purpose of this, I mean, you should know how to graph a lot of these you know, by hand. I mean, I chose some very simple functions. Um, so make sure that you have at least the basics of graphing. However, uh, this could also be that you know, you, if you're allowed technology, um, you, know, you could verify my results as well. So therefore, it's going to be over 2, up 4, but then times 2. So it'd be over 2, up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's going to be like really, really high up there. And you can see this is basically stretch. Boom, right? And I think it's also important when doing this method, or even on that method, is to um, you know, make sure you're using an eraser. All right, the next one is 2x minus 1. Uh, so just remember, think of two, 2 over 1 as your slope. And then minus 1 would be your y-intercept. So we go to the y-intercept, and then we go um, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. You could also go to the left, down 2 over 1. Okay, So that's what our two graphs, um, two graphs separately look like. And then we basically just kind of go where our constraint is. So we're only going to be 2x squared when x is greater than 1. So we go to where 1 is, and you could say here's 1, right? Greater than 1 is going to the right. Less than 1 is going to the left. So this is saying you're only going to use 2x squared when x is greater than 1. So first of all, it's greater than, not greater than or equal to. So we're going to use an open circle, and we're going to go to the right. That means all the rest of this graph that I just did is not a part of the piecewise function. Yes, it's a part of the function 2x squared, but that is being constrained by when o for only values that are x is greater than 1. Here is x is um, less than or equal to 1. So that's going to be a closed circle here. And that's going to be everything going that's less than 1. So the rest of this, we are just going to erase. Okay, And just make sure, guys, based on the inequality symbol, you'll know if it's going to be um, you know, equal to or, or mean open or a closed circle. All right, and then last but not least here, we have h of x, which compo compo is comprised of three different functions. Um, and again, the same exact thing. What I'm going to want to do here is just graph each one of these separate, or graph them separately on the same graph, and then kind of erase based on their constraints. All right, the first kind of constraint is kind of hard to see because it's 0. Well, if here's y, you know, here's x, the output is 0. That means it's on the x-axis, right? So that's kind of a little bit hard to understand or see because it is on the axis. But we'll say that is where it's at. Uh, the next one is negative x. So we know that positive x is that identity function. So negative x is going to be the identity function. You know, you could think of the slope as 1 over 1. So you could go over 1, down 1. Or you could go up 1 to the left 1. But just remember that it's going to be going down and to the right. And then last but not least, we have an x squared minus 1. Um, all right, so that's going to be another parabola. And the only thing different now is there's no stretching. So it's over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. Um, but now where it's being shifted down 1. So you can see here, there's going to be your vertex. Boom, over 1. Let's go over 2, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Over 2, up 4. OK. All right, so we have three functions. We have 0 negative x, and x squared minus 1. Um, now what we simply need to do is go ahead and go back to our constraints, and then now eliminate uh, each function based on the constraint. So here's negative 2, and that's going to be basically where all my constraints are changing. So this one says you're going to use 0 for x is less than negative 2. So it's going to be this function. It's going to be an open circle. And that's for all values that are less than negative 2. Then we go to the next one, negative x. That's, that is true for all values at negative. So negative x is right here, right? So that's over 1, up 1. And then let's see, over 1, up 1. So there's another point right there. So it's going to be from negative 2 to x equals 0. So again, you know, x equals 0 at the origin, and x equals positive 2 over here. So you could do negative 2 to 0. So it's only between these two values. Here is a closed dot. But at 0, it's going to be an open dot. So everything else is going to need to be erased. Only values, only values between negative 2 and 0. And again, this x values, right? A lot of people get confused with the y values, not the y values. It's when x is between negative 2 and 0. And then here, it's for x is greater than or equal to 0. So here's x is at 0, and then it's going to be everything going positive. So we're just going to erase everything over here. OK. Um, 
And there you go. And again, notice that on each one of these values, this still passes the vertical line test, because even though we have two points here, this is contained, this is not contained. This is not contained, this is contained. So it still passes the vertical line test. It's just a function comprised of just two or more functions. That's all a piecewise function is. Graph each function separately, and then go ahead and apply the constraints. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a piecewise function. Thanks.